What's up? This is Adam with the Cloud Automation Blog, bringing you a video around View Realize orchestration and a step by step on how I created the Git Weather workflow. So, just a quick overview of what we're looking at right now it's VMware's View Realize Orchestrator. We're looking at the design pane. So, there's a run. So, if you actually just wanted to run something, it's this is more around role based access control. So, if you wanted um, like an operations team to run workflows and engineering team to design them and then someone else to administer this, this general environment. Um, over here is the uh, more or less the the workflow and library. So this is kind of all the, this is all of the out of the box workflows, various various workflows. Anything from like you can see SQL, the vCenter, VRA, Microsoft like around Hyper V, Azure, um, you name it, and HTTP REST, which I'll I'll be talking about today. And then my workflow right here, so Git Weather, um, and this is the actual workflow. This is the canvas. So the general tab is the name, the ID, maybe some attributes. So these are things that would only be used within the workflow themselves. Inputs, inputs pretty much like in this case, it's the zip code. So having the end user or the previous workflow that called this workflow uh, would enter the zip code outputs if there are any, and this one there is none. And then the actual schema, so the actual canvas itself. So in order to create this workflow from the very start, we need to actually add their HTTP REST endpoint. And the way you do that, under the design pane, click the inventory button and then open up the HTTP REST dropdown. And you'll see here the Open Weather API. That is the REST endpoint that, I'm, that I've added and we need to add um, that I'm gonna show you right now. So if you go back to the workflows tab and click add a REST host, click play on this. And it's gonna ask you for, for some information. Now the name, you can just name it anything. You can name it, let's say this is, um, you know, you're like your Gmail calendar, or if it was um, an IPAM solution, or it was this weather API, for example. So we could name this weather API. Oh, my caps lock is on. And then the actual URL. So the URL here, it's, it, this is pretty important. For this one, it's HTTP colon slash slash API dot, let me move my cursor so I can actually see what I'm typing. Open weather dot org. Oh, it's actually open weather map dot org. And that's all we want to type there for the URL. The actual URL that we're going to request is much longer than that. Because in order to, to, to request information from this, we need, to, you know, we need to present certain information, such as the zip code, or the country, or the unit. So Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin. Connection time on operation time, you can leave those at 30 and 60. And then you can also leave the, these at no and no for this example. For, for some, you may need, uh, there's a, a certificate that needs to be signed. So if it was HTTPS, um, but if it was unsigned, you could, you could actually say just just accept it silently and continue. This would be for like a lab or a dev environment. You probably wouldn't want to have unsigned certificates, untrusted certificates in a production environment. So click next. There is no authentication for this, but there it could be you know OAuth. Usually I, I see a lot of basic. Um, for this there is none. We actually use a key. Click next. There's no proxy either. And then I'm gonna click. I'm gonna, I would click submit here. Um, and I can, but we're not going to use this one. So I'll just click some images to show you what, what it's going to do. So it's just going to run through this workflow. This is an out-of-the-box workflow. We don't have to worry about creating this. VMware has provided this to us. But if I go over back to inventory and I do a refresh up here, you'll see that the new API populate down here. So you'll see right there, incorrect capitalization, there is the weather API. So now we actually need to utilize this API. So how do we do that? So now we actually have to create a workflow. So let's, um, let me shrink this down. I just have a folder called scratch weather API. And I have this workflow right here that I've created. I've the general, I have the API key. So again, this is, this is just a generic API key that open weather uses to just, um, more or less identify who's requesting them. You can go request your own. Um, and then the rest host is what we just created. So if I do, if I click, so I can play, I can debug, I can schedule this for later, I can export it, or actually I wanna edit this workflow. So let me click the little pencil for edit. Um, I could click here, it's gonna say HTTP rest, and there's the one that I added, but I know that I wanna use this one. Now, the one thing that that's important here is you have to select the correct type. So if I did properties, for example, I did accept, I can't edit that. I can't actually do anything with it. I could I could um, tie it to another property that is a, a custom attribute, but is a very simple example. If I did string and I did accept, 
there's really no way for vRealize orchestration to interpret that I need it to go to a um, HTTP REST host. So what they've done is they've, they've more or less done all the filtering for us automatically. So as soon as you enter a REST, REST host, it knows to look in certain places to pull only REST hosts. So it's not going to pull strings. It's not going to pull array of strings or array of REST hosts or array of properties. It's always just going to look for the REST, REST host. So when you click that, it knows exactly where to go. It's only going to show what you've populated. I'm going to do a select there. Inputs. So any inputs that you'd actually want to prompt the end user for. So in this case, we're just doing the zip code. If you wanted to add another one, you could right there. Any outputs? We don't have any. And then the actual schema. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, in this case, we just have a single scriptable task. So you can see right here, scriptable task. You could just drag that right onto the canvas, which I've already done. And then here's the code that I've used. So I'm in what I'm putting into this this one scriptable task, not the entire workflow. The entire workflow are these up here. Just the scriptable task is the API key, the zip code, and the REST host. That's really all I need. There's I, I don't have any outputs. These are you can see they're here, but they're not set to anything. So they're not actually they're not going to be saved. And then if I go to scripting, this is where really the magic happens. This is JavaScript code. This is pretty generic. This will be used um, throughout ServiceNow. This could be used in System Center Orchestrator. Um, and then obviously we're looking at vRealize Orchestrator. It's just very basic JavaScript code. But what's important right here is this line. So let me just make this guy a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So you can see the, the rest operation, so the rest operator here equals new rest operation. So the rest operation template is slash data slash 2.5 slash weather question mark zip equals. And you can see this is in pink and I'm doing I'm adding that to the string comma US. And then I'm also adding the API key and then the units is are our imperial. So what these are right here is I, the inputs. You can actually see the API key, the zip code and the rest host. So if I go back here, you can. So I actually highlighted zip code. What you can do is you can then click zip code and it would replace it. So for example, if I just, you know, the open weather API, if I select that text and I wanted to replace that with rest host, you could just click rest host and it would replace it, which is pretty cool. So let's put that back to open weather API. Um, so this code's really nothing too, uh, too special. So I won't waste too much time on this, but this, this is the code to submit the rest host and then get that response back. So you can see here the response and then it logs that response. And that's it, that's the end. Um, to, actually, to actually run this and test it, you're gonna wanna do a debug. So do a debug, it's gonna ask for the zip code because that is an input, and then you can click Submit on that. And what it's gonna do now is it's gonna actually execute this workflow. And you wanna see green, if it, if it errors out, if it goes red at any time, there's, there's some type of an issue, you'd wanna go look at the logs. And JavaScript logs, until you really get used to debugging them, they're kind of, um, you know, they're just confusing and, and there's a lot of information thrown at you and, and very little of it uh, means anything or even helps you lead, you know, down, down a path of so to, to a solution. Um, but in this case, as you can see, it was all green, which is good. So I can open this up and I can actually see everything that was logged. So you can see content as string status code 200. If I go back to the scriptable task, you can actually see right here, system.log response plus response and system.log status code plus status code. And then system is log content as string plus content as string, which are all right here. So you can see response right there, status code, and content as string. So that's a really cool way to not only execute your workflows, but then also um, debug them as they're running through. In a production instance, you may not want to debug all of this um, because what happens is this, this, this one workflow is go going to be a part of a much larger, you know, 10, 15, 50, 150 different workflows all tied together. Um, and if you could imagine if you had 150 workflows all spitting out all their debug data, you may want to, you know, maybe capture the status code just to, and you'd want to put something maybe like get weather API status code. So within that greater you know, 100, 150 tasks, you could identify that, well, the, you know, the get weather API status code came back as 200. That succeeded. Obviously, it was something else you can kind of sort through. So I hope this helped, to, you know, give you an idea of how, how to get started with VRO API, REST API calls. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and have a great day.